You know, I'm always getting in trouble for saying something I shouldn't or, I don't know, publishing the Danish cartoons of Mohammed. What does Charles Krauthammer have to think about the rise of Islam and censorship? I asked him. Here's what he told me. Let me throw in one more question about uh, empires in the mid-future and the far future. David Goldman wrote a book, How Civilizations Die, and he had the surprising subtitle. He believes that Islam is burning itself out. He talks about the birth rate in Iran and a secular reaction. Do you agree with him? Do you think that uh, Islam is more an in internal crisis than it's foisting a uh, crisis upon the West? I agree entirely with that proposition. I think Islam is now in a stage where it's sort of re rebelling against the subordinate position it's had for 500 years. Whereas uh, before 1500, they were the predominant civilization. They were more advanced than Christianity and Europe in the Middle Ages. So this now is a kind of revenge, is a kind of reassertion of themselves. But fundamentally, Islamism as a form of governance, which is what is resurgent right now, cannot succeed and it will not succeed. Look at Iran. Is there a regime anywhere in their area which is more detested by its young population? No, that was the Green Revolution. Yes, you can suppress it once, maybe you can suppress it twice. We had the revolutions of 1848 in, in Europe. That was the Green Revolution of 2009 in Iran. But ultimately, by the 1870s, the old regimes were swept away in Europe, and that will happen. Islamism. You know, the slogan of the, the Brotherhood and of the jihadist in Iran, Islam is the answer, it is not. And that's why I have sort of a weird optimism about the future of Israel and the future of sort of liberal democracy in the long run in the Arab world. They tried Arab nationalism, the pan-Arabism of Nasser, ending with uh, Saddam and now Assad, that's the end of the line. Fifty years, it did not succeed, it was not the answer. It was an amalgam of socialism, military dictatorship, imitating the worst of, of Western fascism, and it failed. So now Islam is the new answer. It will fail. Israel has to survive, as it did the first 50 years of Arab nationalism, to survive these coming 50 years of Islamism. And when that collapses, when it burns itself out, then there might be a future where Israel will have a partner for peace and the Arabs will have a way to develop. I have one last question for you, uh, and it's about freedom of speech. In Canada, I think freedom of speech is on the march. Uh, we're repealing some of our human rights censorship laws. Our Supreme Court is tilting more towards liberty. We, we, we're not quite at the First Amendment stage, but I sense that the United States is moving the other way. I look at the imprisonment of uh, the filmmaker of this uh, YouTube uh, movie that was uh, fingered by the Obama administration for, uh, for the riots overseas. Uh, and I see in the United Kingdom more and more human rights style censorship. Uh, what is the future of the First Amendment uh, and free speech in America and the West? Well, in Europe, it is in decline. They're simply cowed by the threats. This is just pure physical cowardice. Nobody, you know, that you, you, you can't print the cartoons. Nobody will re re reprint them. Everybody is self-censoring. In the U.S., I think you're wrong. I think the U.S. is incredibly strong in terms of free speech. You mentioned the filmmaker who made the video that caused supposedly the riots. Well, the guy, look, I wouldn't have done this, and I think the administration was very remiss in sending a parole, a parole violation officers to his house at midnight. That shouldn't have been done. But the guy was on parole because he had abused the Internet, and the condition of parole was that he not in, in, get involved in any way in the Internet. He was convicted of fraud. Originally, it was not a political con conviction. He swindled someone, and the court gave an order. So there was a legal way to put him, you know, to say he 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 went in violation of the probation. Therefore, he can be punished. I can assure you that if he hadn't had that on his record, they would not have stuck him in jail. And if they had, there would have been a huge uproar, and a judge would have let him go in an hour. So, in principle, free speech, the First Amendment is almost a religion in the United States. And people, you know, they self-censor because of sensitivity to minorities. But that, in a sense, is a kind of excessive, what people imagine is decency or excessive uh, sensitivity. 
that I think comes and goes as minorities become more integrated into society. I think that fades away. So there's a little bit of that, but I don't think there's anything like real censorship at all. And I think of all the areas to worry about in the U.S., the economy, weakening foreign policy, uh, other problems, free speech is one of the bright spots. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Let you place your worries over in Europe. That's where they're more deserved and they might do more good. Dr. Krauthammer, thanks very much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.